So I'm going to briefly introduce the three main macroeconomic measurements that we talk about, usually in a principles class, but it's good review if you're taking intermediate macro or international finance or international macro. So <clears throat> it's important to read about this too in a textbook because I'm just going to really briefly go over this. But the three main measurements that we have are gross domestic product, inflation, and unemployment. So these are reported periodically. Gross domestic product is quarterly or yearly. Inflation and unemployment can be monthly. But these are the three main measurements to measure the health of the economy. First of all, gross domestic product is the annual dollar value of new final goods and services produced within the borders of a country. So it's yearly, meaning it's a flow variable. It's dollar value, so it can be measured in US dollars, even for countries that don't use the dollar. It can be converted into dollars, or it can be done in the currency of the country that's reporting it. It's new final goods. That means that it doesn't double count. It doesn't count used products, and it doesn't count intermediate goods. So I always think of cars as my example. A used car doesn't count because it's trying to get at production. Remember, G GDP is production and income and spending. So if a car comes off the assembly line, it is sold once, and it can't be resold because that would mean that there's two sales, and that would represent two cars. So only the final good sales. Uh, the new good. And then final means no intermediate goods. If a car has four tires, the car company actually bought tires from a supplier, so you can't count four tires twice because then it would look like there are eight tires. So it has to be new final goods. And then finally, it has to be within the borders of a country. There's an alternative measure called gross national product or gross G GNP. Um, which actually gets at the transfers of funds. For example, a Japanese car company producing in America could be America's GDP and Japan's GNP. So that's the, the technical definition. Remember, it is income, it is production, and it is spending. If a car is produced, we're trying to get at the fact that a car is made and that makes life better, perhaps. Sp if you buy a car, you're spending money, so that could be a $30,000 sale, so you're representing a car's $30,000 worth of production, which allows us to compare a big car and a little car because a big car costs more dollars. So spending gets to the value of it. And then finally, income. The owners of not only labor, with auto workers, but also the factory owner and the landowners, all the resources are paid. And so if a car is produced, the auto worker and factory owner get paid, buyer buys it, production line produces it. It's all the same car. It's three ways of producing or measuring this, this important idea. Now, is producing a car always good? You can always say, well, what about things that are, aren't spent money on, that they're free or they're not monetized? Gross domestic product sometimes misses that. It only counts monetary transactions, but it does get at the idea that more could be better or a better quality of life. It can understate things. It can overstate things if cars pollute. It can understate them if, if you do things if you walk. Um, that would not be part of GDP, but it gets at the point of production and spending. Now, there's a couple versions of this. Now, calculating-wise, you can take per capita or per person, which is GDP, or Y is the GDP, divided by population. Real GDP, I always do it, controlling for prices. You take a real variable by dividing by prices. Now, a little bit about nominal and real variables is that nominal GDP incorporates price changes as well as quantity changes. And so we'll look at the numerical example in another video. But you can divide by CPI and it will take out the price increases. And so spending more money on cars might mean a better car or more cars. And it will actually take out the fact that the same car might cost more year after year. So that's the real variable. And then finally, percentage change usually of real GDP is simply new value minus old value over old value times 100%. And that's how we get our percentage changes. So gross domestic product is the number one indicator or, or measurement of an economy. It's done periodically for all countries of the world. Inflation is the percentage change in prices. The CPI, or the Consumer Price Index, is a single price measurement of all important prices in the economy. Generally speaking, it's a basket of goods put in. All, all the items that are important to a typical urban family are priced and put it together, and that basket of goods is priced jointly. And then year after year, if the same goods cost more than the year before, then those goods will have a more expensive basket. Now, they're normalized. They're converted so that the base year, which is chosen by economists, to equal 100, then all the higher prices would be higher than 100, indicating inflation. And all the prices in the past, usually, that are lower than 100 would mean that prices are lower. So it's a joint price. It's a common 
a single measure of important prices put together in a single index. There's no dollar sign, there's no percentage sign, it's simply a number where 100 is the base year and then higher prices would go up from 100. Unemployment is the percentage of eligible workers not working but looking for work. We have to decide who is eligible. Generally speaking, young children, retirees, some students, military, active military, or people who are in prison and other institutions are not eligible. <clears throat> also, people who are not working by choice or because they choose not to work because they are discouraged, they can't find a job. About 59, 60% of people are usually eligible or part of the labor force. So of those people, how many people are technically unemployed? That means working less than one hour per week. So you could be underemployed, working below your skills or below the hours you want, but you could, you're still counted as employed. So this one is the most criticized because a lot of times it's a very low threshold to be counted as employed. But nonetheless, this number means uh, that it's the number of eligible workers who are actively seeking work but not working. So gross domestic product is income and spending and output. Inflation is a percent change in prices. Unemployed is the number of workers who wish to work. These are the big three. Typical figures for the U.S. 2 to 3 percent per year is a good growth measure of real GDP. 2 percent inflation is targeted usually by the U.S. and other countries. And 5 percent unemployment is the target number for the U.S. So that's how to, this is how to think about how to measure and understand the three main measurements of macroeconomic performance.